We're in rhythm every game, and um, just a sensational performance by Anthony tonight. I suppose the free throw line is an example of the aggression that he showed, but was there something that you saw from a mindset standpoint with him about the way that he was going to attack this game and Portland as well? Yeah, well, I mean, I think there was uh, there was there was matchups in both games, you know, that um, there were a problem for our opponent, and um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we exploited that, uh, and we were able to do that. We're doing a better job, um, you know, getting the ball inside. Um, you know, when they're trying to take him him away, you know, and uh, we've had some, some games where we, we didn't feed the post very well uh, or play out of the double teams. And, you know, we're getting better you know, each game with that. And, um, you know, AD was finding people and our guards were getting him the ball in position to score. And Frank Dan had just asked AD about LeBron. And he said, basically, uh, trust me, he'll be fine uh, based on what he saw at you. But is there anything you can share uh, along those lines and what kind of confidence of him coming back and getting to where, where he expects to be? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, he's he looks good in his in his workouts. Um, you know, obviously there's going to be a little bit of a, you know, uh, you know, an adjustment period with with him in terms of getting his rhythm and timing back. You know, hopefully we have enough time, uh, you know, for for that to pick up very quickly. Um, you know, I tend to learn to have confidence in in LeBron James in situations like that, and uh, you know, we've said all along. Um, you know, we're going to battle through this stretch the best we can and, and try to get as healthy as we can down the stretch, knowing that we can do big things if, uh, you know, if we get our, our two horses and really our, our whole team back, Dennis included. Hey, Frank, I know you've talked a lot about Amy's legs um, being a, a huge factor and how he's played lately, but is there something that you think maybe the stakes of these, these games um, and, and the standings and, and trying to still get the six feet has brought out this side of him that's a little more competitive. Yeah, I think that's the silver lining that no one's really uh, talking about right now is, um, you know, for the last couple of weeks, you know, in the last two games, you know, we've been playing really every possession matters type of basketball, you know, which is what the playoffs are, are like. That's what the playoff intensity is about. And sometimes you, you know, you have a, a playoff seating locked up and you kind of coast into it. Um, you know, you're not as sharp as you need to be going into the playoffs. But, you know, the urgency that we've uh, been forced to play with, you know, I think has is, uh, is come out in Anthony's performance the last couple of games, and I think it's going to benefit our whole group. Yeah. Frank, um, what have you kind of made of Alex's performance these last two games and sort of the improvement he's shown as the, the primary ball maker? Uh, sorry, primary playmaker and ball handler? Alex Caruso has stepped up big time, you know, in these last two games. You know, he, he really has. He's uh, for all the talk about Anthony in the last last two games. Um, you know, uh, with with high scoring totals, Alex Alex has had his two highest scoring totals of the season in the last two games as well, 18 and 17 points. And um, you know, to do it without skipping a beat on the defensive end, where he is an elite defender, and I think it's worth mentioning that he has to be considered for all defensive team. Um, you know, with the way he he, he guards, the way he does everything on that side of the ball. So to see him, uh, you know, dominate on the defensive end and, you know, take the, take control of, of our offense um, and play on both sides just, just proves his value to us. And uh, it was a big reason we won a championship last year. And, you know, he's going to be huge for us in the playoffs this year. Bill? Frank, uh, as, as it, how have you seen AD accept the challenge of trying to lead this team without the broad? over this stretch and was tonight maybe sort of the, the manifestation of kind of that you know, relatively short term journey he's done. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, with Anthony, it's really, he really leads with his play, you know, um, as much as with his voice, um, you know, and he's, he's, he's rallying guys and, you know, uh, talking things out uh, throughout the game and whatnot. But, you know, he sets a tone for us with his assertiveness, you know, when he comes to, uh, you know, comes to play the last two games uh, like he did the last two games, you know, looking to dominate. You know, then uh, you know, everybody else gets uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, air in their chest and you, know, you get more confidence in what we're going to be able to do that night. And um, you know, it just just takes time when you when you miss as much time as he did for for him to be able to, you know, have that that sort of uh, you know uh, that sort of pop to his game. And um, you know, so I think it's been it's been great with his leadership. You know, of late. Dave. 
follow it up on that. Is there a trickle down effect? Obviously, the impact you make statistically speaks for itself, but do you feel like there is any tension released by, okay, this looks like the guy that helped win his championship? And also, does it affect the LeBron time at all? Uh, just being like, hey, if AD's playing this way, well, maybe he can take a couple extra days to, to get back right. Yeah, I mean, I think it affects the confidence of the group, but I don't think it affects Bron's timeline. You know, Bron's going to try to get in there as much as he can to to get a you know to get a rhythm uh, without agitating the ankle. You know, I mean, I, I don't think uh, how Anthony's playing or what our seating uh, situation looks like is going to change uh, Lebron's timeline. You on? Frank, we, we saw the, the Mark Trez pairing for the first time tonight. Um, what, what, why did you go to those two together for the first time, and, and what did you think of them together? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a minus nine overall, but, um, you know, that's just because we gave up two threes, you know, during that stretch in the fourth. Uh, I, I think there's uh, some, some benefits to playing a lineup like that. You know, obviously, um, you know, there's some risk as well uh, because both are used to defending the center position. But, um, you know, we want to get your, your best players out there. And, uh, you know, it's one of the things we, we haven't quite looked at yet. And when we're trying to manage, you know, the, you know, the addition of, of, of Andre, um, you know, with those two guys, we're used to playing big minutes as well. So, um, you know, I did like what it looked like tonight. Um, you know, I think we're getting better, again, playing with, with two bigs, whether it's, you know, Anthony and Drum or, or Mark and Trez together. Um, and just some of the dynamics that go into that, you know. But I think it was a positive, even though the, the overall net was a negative. I think it was a positive uh, for the energy of our group. We've got time for two more, Nick Hamilton. Nick, you can go ahead. You're on mute. There you go. Hey, Frank. Uh, what did you think? Uh, just want to get your thoughts. What you thought of Tony Hope and Tucker in this first game back tonight? And how much you did you guys find on this? Yeah, we miss tailing. You know, when we're short-handed and uh, especially at the ball handler position, you know, and Alex has got to, to sort of handle it as uh, you know the you know by himself, and we have to ask wings to bring it up and bigs to bring it up and whatnot. You know, that challenges your your offensive flow big time. You know, and uh, you know for him to come back after two games and you know just just really to kind of stabilize us. You know, and give us somebody that can get us into our sets and uh, but still be that attacker that he is. He made a three in the first half. Uh, I thought he was great tonight, and you know he was definitely missed in the last two games. Mark Berman. Uh, hey Frank, uh, what does it look like for LeBron versus the Knicks, and what do you make of the matchup? You know they just won on on this floor also, uh, but you'll have AD this time. Yeah, we uh, don't know about Bron yet. LeBron's day to day, uh, so we don't have an answer on that yet, and. Um, you know, obviously the Knicks are playing exceptional basketball this year. You know, to come in and beat the Clippers uh, on their home floor is a is a big time win. Uh, Coach Tibbs has done a phenomenal job on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, with uh, with their defense and you know the way they're playing together offensively and how he's using Julius. Um, you know, I think he's uh, he's done just an exceptional job.